Well, Tanzo, it's good to see you again today. Yes, you too, Jess. Yes. Both of us got a chance to be at South Dakota State University today for the FFA um, event, the FFA, I guess what do they call it, their, their annual meeting? Their state convention. Their state convention, that's the word I was looking for. You had a chance to present for NRCS, and I got a chance to present for the Grassland Coalition, and uh, I think we had a good day. I think we made a difference, I hope. Yeah, I think so. And I think these students, many of them as young as, well, I know there's even some junior high students here, so probably right. as young as maybe 12 years old, are recognizing drought impacts kind of almost from wherever in the state they're from. You bet. I agree with you. I know that in my presentation, I had a chance to talk a little bit about grasslands and the importance of them and the threats to them. And of course, we talked about we talked about drought, right? And we talked about resilience and all of those kinds of things. So it was a good visit. Mm -hmm. I got to sit in just for a few moments uh, during one of your presentations, and I was shocked and very pleased at the knowledge level that these teenagers are exhibiting about not just grasslands, but but agriculture in general in our state. I agree. It's it's it makes you feel good. It makes you feel like there's a promise. So, you know, I mean, we're here today, we want to do a little video, we want to talk about drought things, but, you know, my path to the Grassland Coalition is different than most of the other board members. Mm -hmm. So, I am a board member, but my path that brought me there was actually through a professional career with NRCS. Um, but there's no doubt that over my almost 40 year career with NRCS, I definitely had to work and got a chance to work with a lot of producers that were facing difficult weather conditions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it was not enough rain, like many of us are facing this year, and then sometimes it was way too much moisture piled up on land and flooding and some of those things mm -hmm. too. So I think the thing that we know for sure is Mother Nature is going to give us, uh, throw us some curveballs, and we're going to have to be ready to deal with them. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of the message today to the young people was is that uh, there were a few of them that kind of wanted uh, to push me into a discussion about climate change, I think, and like that. But I think the key of it is, is we don't really have to talk about that. We just have to talk about the fact that weather in South Dakota is going to be variable. And let's do everything we can on our ranches and our operations to be resilient to that, whatever Mother Nature throws at us. Mm -hmm. So, Jeff, to the, to the rancher or even pr prospective producer that might listen or watch these videos... What, what do you say to them? Is there, is there a magic recipe that fits across the state? Oh, I don't think there's a magic recipe, right? I mean, that would be like what we've always said at NRCS, that uh, with conservation planning, every ranch is different, every farm is different. And so I don't think there's one secret. But I do think that one secret that has probably served many people well, and I think the other board members of the Grassland Coalition pointed out well, is to have a plan, to know what you're going to do. And I don't think it's always just, we, we talk a lot about having a drought plan, but I think that it's also smart about having a plan where you want to take your ranch long term and to make it be better and healthier, right? And then that's going to help prepare you for a drought plan. I think the drought plan is a portion of that. It's like, what am I going to do if this happens? Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I think it's also good to know what you want to do long term with the operation and how you want to make it be better. Yeah. And, and better is in your eyes, mm -hmm. right? For but sure. how do you want to do that? Mm -hmm. So I think planning, um, of course, many people can call that a conservation plan, a ranch plan, you can call it whatever kind of plan. But I think that has a subset in it that deals with what if these really extreme things, face, I face these extremes, and then what am I going to do? What steps will I take? Mm -hmm. I know in, uh, in my conversation with Jim Falstick, uh, he really said it well. Yeah, it can be drought this time, but it can be any time that grazing or forages become unavailable. Right. It could be fire, hail, uh, deep snow in the wintertime if you're a winter grazer. Um, it could be any number of things that all of a sudden, heck, even losing a lease could could change the stars for, for this year's grazing plan for an operation. So I think you're right. And, and seeing that long term, not only for the resources perspective, but financially, is there another generation to this? To this operation or, or are we going to be it right maybe maybe this land is our retirement account um you know all those things like you say no two operations are exactly alike no they're not and you know on the 
the good thing for me is is that the farm that I was able to grow up on is the farm that I've gotten to go back to now after I retired from NRCS. And so now I'm there seeing things and experiencing some of those things. And I sure as heck don't want to give anybody the impression that I've faced difficult drought and had to deal with it in just the short time I've been back. But, you know, just a year or two ago, we had a pretty fair crop of grasshoppers and we got a little dry, you know? And so some of the grasslands on the farm were suffering a lot and some decisions had to be made. And I guess the one thing that I tried to prioritize is, is that I want to try to do what's right that's going to keep that, those species, those grasses and those forbs as healthy as they can be so that when I get the right moisture conditions, again, they're going to come back. Mm -hmm. And I think that also then ties to the same thing with the soil. I think that's something that it's way better to start before you're facing the drought, right? Mm -hmm to have some of those reserves built up. But I think that goes back to this whole idea of being resilient and how are you going to try to handle that. Yep, yep. And, and would you agree that's uh, a purpose of this, of this homemade video campaign from the Grassland Coalition is, you know, we want to reach the people that are entering, you know, what in some situations across the state might be the, almost the third season of, of drier than normal conditions. If, if you find in yourself back against the wall, having to right. destock heavily or purchase feed or all of the above, um, we don't want you to be found in this situation again. We want right. to help you access the tools, the resources, the, the people that can, can help you walk through and, and be better prepared next time. Exactly. But when the board discussed this whole thing, you know, it's like in some cases there can be concern that, well, we're too late to help people, mm -hmm. right? If you're in the drought today, we're too late to help. Mm -hmm. What good is the drought plan going to do now? But like the board said, right? We can't lose this opportunity to help people so they don't have to deal with it the next time, and you said that well. So, yes, that's the purpose of this campaign. We hope that you are um, at a place where you have it all planned out, you've had a good conservation plan for years, you've implemented things on your, on your ranch, things are going well for you, even though you're dry, maybe you've got some of those uh, ways to deal with that built into your system. Um, we hope that you get rain. But on the other hand, if you're not in that situation, you haven't had a chance to develop those, we hope that you'll say, now's the time. And so know that there's a ton of resources out there from a lot of partners, including the folks at the Grassland Coalition who can direct you to the right places to do the right thing for your place. Certainly visit the, uh, the sddroughtplan.org website. Um, it's named Pray for Rain, Plan for Drought, but sddroughtplan.org. Uh, the Grassland Coalition offers the South Dakota Grazing School at several locations throughout the summer, and that's an annual event. But, um, but make plans to attend this year, uh, particularly if you're finding yourself with fewer livestock to, to do stockmanship with, or uh, maybe you have completely liquidated and have some time on your hands. What, what better time to, to invest $150 and the cost of a few nights hotel room to, to help equip yourself to manage those resources at your disposal even better than you've been able to in the past. And no, one, no one questions the fact that, that farmers and ranchers are America's original land stewards. But if we're truly honest with ourselves, we can all do a better job. So um, let's learn from each other and, uh, and we hope to see you at some of those Grassland Coalition events. You bet. And along that same line, you know, Come to those events, just like Tan said. But then the other thing of it is, is know that we have out there the, the mentor handbooks and some of that stuff. So there's a lot of producers across this state that probably haven't walked exactly the same path you need to walk because your operation is different than theirs, but they've walked down a path. And there are so many of them that I've run into are willing to share their, the things that happened to them. And most of them are going to say, well, it may not work in your operation, but this is what I did. And, what, and many of them are humble about the things they've done, but they're willing to talk. So look those folks up, ask for advice, reach out to people, come to those events, and let's all together try to head down a path where we not only make your operation be more resilient, but we make the community be more resilient, and we make our state be more resilient. Certainly. The resources are there. They are. There's a lot of resources there. 
and I'm anxious to get to meet many of you in the future and just get to know your operations and I want to learn from you because I have so much to learn. I think the one constant in working with anything with Mother Nature, right? I mean, you said it that all of us have things we could do better and there is no doubt because the minute you think that you've got it figured out, she sends you a curveball. <laughs> it's like I got something new to try. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, mm -hmm. there's always something more to work on. So, certainly. Well, thanks for your time, Jeff. No problem. And, uh, it's been a pleasure. I hope this messaging reaches the people that it needs to reach. And, and uh, by all means, uh, send a friend the, the website address. And uh, we appreciate you watching and listening and providing any feedback you might have. Very good. Thanks. Thank you.